Hello again. In this episode, I'd like to talk about how I've set up that animated menu in my last demo project. That's this one, if you haven't checked it out yet. This is where you run around as a Sinti character, and then you press a button, up comes a menu, and then you pick another character if you want. Pick that menu again, and then the menu disappears. So the idea behind that is that I explained in my previous video how to set up the characters, how to change the characters and the skin tones and the outfits via input commands in Unreal Engine. And this video is about how did I make that menu and how does it appear and disappear so smoothly. There's also this one here when I click the WP Guru button, it comes up with credits for the project and they then animate off again. That's all done with a blueprint widget animation that is different to timelines in the event graph. And I thought I'll talk about how I made that happen. So the way to animate a menu that's happening right inside the blueprint. Let me close those down, go right back into where I've got it. So I'm calling these things from my third person character with a key press, but the actual magic is happening in the selection menu. So I'll bring that up. That's my UI widget, it's just called selection menu. And in it, we looks like we don't see anything. That's because at the beginning of the animation, everything appears to be off screen. So I can add the widget to my viewport without anything showing. So I don't have to make sure I invisibilize things. That's just happening by default overall. At the bottom here, I've got a couple of animations set up. One's called fade animation and one's called credit animation. Fade is the one that I'm using for the menu that brings up the logos and slides in the little instructions from the left. And then credit animation is bringing in that one big image here. So with any of these selected, with either of these selected really, I can slide the playhead forward and Unreal Engine will show me that one animation that's selected. So if I pick the other one, Fade animation, then I'll get to see this. So that's exactly what we've been seeing while I was playing the game. And either of these animations can be queued via a node if we have a reference to that selection menu. So I'll talk about how to make this happen in a moment, just to finish off where we actually call this and how this gets being put on the screen. That's in my third person character in something called, actually I've got a whole new event graph here, which is called HUD. There we go. So the there's only two parts to the puzzle. The first one takes the menu, creates the menu and adds it to the viewport, also stores it as a local variable so that we can call upon it. So that's just, that's, that's, this is my selection menu here. And then further down at the bottom, this is the input action show menu that I'm calling. And that's called, this event is called when I'm hitting the tab key that's set up under Edit Project Settings. I'm using a do once. As soon as a key is pressed, this doesn't get executed like 57 times. It only happens once. And then I'm going through a flip-flop node. And the flip-flop is there so that I can detect how many times has that button been pressed. First time, we execute the top branch. Second time, we execute the bottom branch. Third time, we're back to the top branch again. And not surprisingly, the top branch is what brings up the menu and the bottom branch is what takes the menu away again. And we do this simply by grabbing a reference to our menu. It's a little bit difficult to see with all the lines going on here. Let me just move this further here so that you can see what, um, what's happening, where all the blue lines are going. So we grab a selection to our selection menu. That's this one here. And we grab this note here, play animation forward and the menu is the target of that node. Then we need an animation to play, and that is the fade animation, which also comes from the selection menu. So the way to bring this up is to drag out from the selection menu and then uh, just type whatever that animation is called. So fade animation, there we go, it's get fade animation, we'll grab a reference to that. And then out of this, we get something like play animation and then we have several nodes so play animation play forward reverse time range so all these things can be queued or executed from the event graph that's very swish that's very cool and that is how this animated menu then happens gets so that the animation happens then just to finish the whole branch off here we enable game and ui mode and set my cursor to visible 
on the bottom branch when we take the menu away again gets animated off we set the input mode to game only and then make the cursor invisible again and either of these will then reset the do once node here so that the whole do once thing can be called again and somebody can press a button again so that's how we call that and the animation the actual interesting bit that is happening inside the selection menu itself let's talk a little bit about that because that is i found this very interesting how unreal engine encapsulates literally every single property of of any item here so if we stick with the fade animation here this is the actual animation created with this green thing that's called animation so just you know create another one call a new animation that'll be a third animation that we've got here inside an animation we now have a track the track corresponds to the actual item in your hierarchy that you'd like to animate so i have two one is the horizontal box which is this thing at the bottom or this one here and one are the instructions and that is well currently off screen but you can just about see them here that's another item with any of these selected we can't actually do anything yet because we then have to create yet another track to tell unreal engine what property of that object we'd like to animate i thought that's kind of on one hand you think oh my god that's total overkill but at the same time it really prevents you from messing with keyframes you don't really want to touch like i'm used to seeing so many keyframes that you think oh, which one is this again and this is actually really easy to go now this is the instructions track and this is the horizontal box with the uh, with the button icons here so there's really no no mixing this up then in here we can then open any of these tracks up and then animate these properties right inside here so like for my case that was x translation and as you move the slider you can see the value interpolating until it reaches zero okay almost zero but yeah, so that's that's very interesting. These values here are actually relative to the ones we set up over here in the details panel. And that's another weird thing to get your head around. We'll set an animation up just to show you the whole process and the ins and outs of it. But trust me when I say this is actually, this is really, really elegant and very well thought out if you grasp the principle, which I didn't until literally two days ago. So I thought, hey, best make a note of that. So let's go back here and fiddle with something called new animation. So that's our, our thing now. We're going to call that in code in a moment. Let's go call this new animation. I've made that with the green button here. Now I need to select a track. Before I do that, I mean, I can do it right now. Pick a widget from here, all named widgets. But that's a long, long list here. It is actually easier to, rather than to just click press a track here, pick the item up here in the selection menu or even in the viewport of what you'd like that track to be so my all my items here are kind of you know where i'd like them to be so perhaps i'm just going to go and uh, create myself another one just make a new thing i'll just use an image here and drag that into the viewport i'm not gonna well i'm gonna make sure this is just on its own not in a in a box that's kind of up here i'm not worried about the about the position or anything i'm just going to go give it an icon perhaps perhaps this one here big red x and make it make it large so it's it's not natively that large uh, by default so it'll look a little bit pixelated but you get the idea there's a image here that's that's what it's all about so with that image selected we can we can call it something different here we'll call it image 79 whatever that's fine so with that image now selected here in the viewport we go and create ourselves a track with that with image 79 so if we select it up here unreal engine is kind enough to bring that up down here so let's create that image 79 and you think well great let's let's go and animate stuff but no that's not how it works either yet you have to now create a track within a track to tell unreal engine what properties of this object you'd like to mess with and what would you like to give keyframes to so let's create let's click track and see all these things here. so all these properties can be animated independently and each of them needs a separate track if we wanted to do that so visibility is kind of maybe i want to fade this in and out visibility is one i would use maybe actually not for that i would probably use color and opacity for that i think visibility is a boolean value it can either be visible or it's not visible but you can't transition between that so it's actually not visibility it's color and opacity to fade that in and out transform would be 
position so you can move a position around i'm going to use calendar opacity just click that and that has now created another track inside this object i can create another one if i want and then you know animate another property of this object independently but yeah this is this is that track for color and opacity open that up to expose rgb and a and these are kind of these have been given one keyframe already so all these orange dots here that's a keyframe for this object at frame zero already so say i wanted to fade this over the course of one second perhaps so i'll go and put my playhead to one second or to whatever value you want and at that point i would like to animate the opacity value so the alpha value and i'll go and create myself another keyframe here with that tiny little plus icon in between these little arrow icons i believe you can also change the value that'll also set a keyframe there we go but my value is kind of fine I, i'm happy with one so either way it will work auto keyframing when you change the value add a keyframe or you can just go and create one manually here so that's cool i've got my keyframes from the beginning to the end they don't really do anything just yet so i'm thinking well i'd like my logo to be invisible at the start and there's two things that we can that we need to do here so first of all we need to change the value of this relative keyframe here which i would like to be one, zero because i like visibility to be zero so i could i suppose go ahead here and find the uh, alpha value here which is set to one or i could go over here and change it here well there's a big difference between that because the values in the details panel they're being changed by the values that are set in the timeline so i'd like to go and set this to zero here let's let's go let's go do this in the timeline here set this to zero so that the that the visibility of the object is nil so at that point it's now no longer showing here and i can see in the details panel i can i can also see zero here so that's kind of cool it's kind of what i want let me go and move the playhead and i can see that my logo is indeed being faded in and animated in that's kind of cool but and also notice that the value both values appear to change in the same way so this interpolates and this interpolates now the thing is if i were to leave it as it is technically the the set value overall for this object it now says it's zero but Unreal Engine knows that I haven't actually changed this value. The animation is changing this value. So if I were to add this icon into my viewport now, I would see that the logo is visible and it doesn't actually animate in at all. It's visible at the beginning. And that's because the default property in the details panel here is technically set to one. But we don't see it at the moment, but I didn't change this. I changed this value. So if I want the logo to be not visible at the beginning i have to go and set this value to zero also and then i can add my my thing to the viewport perhaps a little example will will suffice here let's go and, and put this into my viewport i've already got the logo going here i might i could either put it in here yeah i might do that actually let me just go and then mess with this a little bit it's not it's not going to be elegant but hey that's cool i'm going to grab just another can I move this out here? Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to grab another reference to my selection menu out here. And I'm going to get it and I'm going to go and play in animation forward from here. So play animation. Oops. Sorry. No, I'm going to actually grab the animation from that, first of all. <laughs> so ours was called, uh, what was it called again? I totally forgot. Short term memory, a new animation. Hey, that's, that's clever. Good stuff. So from my selection menu, I'm going to grab my new animation get new animation so that's two references here from the menu to the animation and from the animation i'm going to grab my play animation node now in fact play animation forward because we'd like for this to to go you know to to play forward i'll put that somehow into my graph here so that it's executed I know it's not going to be pretty, but hey, that's, you know, just to show you the principle. And I'll also need to grab a reference to my menu and add it as a target in the play animation forward node. Because the node needs to know which menu it is supposed to play the animation on. So here we can see this a little bit better 
that the selection menu has two references, one going into new animation, one going into target. And this here was supposed to end up in here. Well, yeah, there we go, perfect. So now I should, doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? What's happened? Oh, I see, because it, it didn't quite have that compiled here. So this needs to be compiled for all these things to actually work, I guess. So let's go and try this again. Compile that, compile, yeah, perfect. So right, compile the selection menu changes you've made. Otherwise, other classes can't actually get it. Yeah, get it, I get fine. So if we now go and play this, we should technically see the logo right away the moment the game starts. So even without, there we go, that's that's it. Even without the animation having been kicked off with my tab key. So watch what happens when I do that. So the animation is still being kicked off, but the value is then being set to zero and then it fades in. See what happens? So this is the thing I wanted to bring to your attention that the, that the values in the details panel are animated by the timeline, but only when the timeline is actually being kicked off. So if I go, if I wanted to have the red X not showing until I actually press the tab key, I need to go and go to the selection menu, go to my, with my image selected here, I need to go and set this value here, the alpha value at the, on, in the details panel to zero. It's kind of difficult to understand because technically it was already zero, but that's because the timeline was taking care of that. So now it's set to zero by default. So it should now, if I'm correct here, no, I'm not correct. That's a shame, isn't it? Why is that not correct? Oh, I see. Maybe it's being pernickety and the moment I'm selecting in animation, it'll not take any new values in this field. So maybe I just need to select off it. That's probably what I need to do. Select off it. And then you will see that the value for the initial opacity or initial alpha value is actually one. So now I can go and set it to zero. Now I do actually not see it. Right, interesting. See, I didn't know that. I'm glad I'm talking you through it and me. So if you set the initial values, make sure the animation is not selected. The moment the animation is selected, it then takes over the values and interpolates them. Let's see if I'm correct. Let's play this thing again and no X showing. whoop de doo that's exciting. We run around, bring up the menu and X fades in. Perfect doesn't fade out because we haven't set that up yet, but you get the picture. We could do that as well. Uh, I'm sure you can work it out by yourself. So that's how I've made these animations happen. They're set on the actual blueprint widget in here on the bottom right. If this isn't showing, sometimes the compiler results are in the front, so just change over to the timeline. And remember, create an animation with the animation. Well, maybe we'll just go and uh, delete that animation. But with that once the animation has been created, you create a track with the item that you'd like to animate. So select something, then create a track. Inside the track, create another track that will then have the property that you'd like to actually animate on there. Then go ahead and animate it then queue it by any means you want. You can queue these in the widget as well, or you can go and queue them from the game mode or from the third person character or even from the level blueprint. They can all grab a reference to the selection menu as well as the animation. And then, you know, you kick off either animation forward or animation reverse to make that logo go back again. And there we go. I hope this was helpful. Uh, just a reminder, you can get this project in which I've got this menu going from my coffee store for free if you want to put it through the ringer and just have a look at it and have a play with it yourself. There's all kinds of other exciting things in that. There's a character selection menu on the bottom and I'm changing skeletal meshes as well as the materials on the character. So it appears as if you're changing outfits or changing characters in that demo. That's kind of the point of it. And I thought I'd make this second video to show you how I've done the menu. Menus. If you want to have a look, there's a link in the description to this video to that free project. I hope you found this helpful and enlightening. I wish you all the best of luck with your Unreal projects. It is a fascinating subject matter to delve into. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.